here again is Stone Phillips. Former cast member of Saturday Night Live. It's one of the most prestigious credits a comedic actor can have on his resume. It conjures names like Belushi, Aykroyd, Chase, and Carvey. And now Hartman, Phil Hartman. During his eight years on the show, he was the often invisible but always indispensable man. So tonight, we show you the many faces of Phil Hartman. Anybody seen Hartman? Or With even more Hartman breakthrough performances on the talk show circuit. <laughs> <laughs> Phil, you've been drinking, or you've been drinking? Yeah, about a joy juice. So what? Fortunately, a more sober Phil Hartman sat down with us in the world famous Rainbow Room. I am a comedy Buddha, the laughing Buddha. <laughs> As Hartman tells it, it was on this urban mountaintop, 57 stories above Studio 8H, home to Saturday Night Live that he was first tempted into a network comedy career by a former NBC programming chief. Brandon Tartikoff brought me here before I was hired for Saturday Night Live, and we stood at that window, and he said, all this can be yours if you bow down and worship me. And the rest is history. <laughs> Actually, Phil Hartman's history in show business dates back to his early childhood, growing up in suburban Los Angeles. I was so withdrawn and so shy, and I think it created a tension in me that made me need to be appreciated. And by the time I got to junior high and high school, I noticed this ability to do dialects and to impersonate people. You say you don't do impressions of people, you do impersonations. Yeah. What's the difference? An impression is a caricature. Impression is uh, John Wayne that uh, is cartoony and goes, Come on, Pilgrim, let's get out of here. My, an impersonation is, I'm sorry, Stone, you flunked your depth perception test. You can't fly with the flying tigers. I like to, I like to be real, or as close to real as I can. They fall into certain categories, for example, there is the breathy type voice, which Jimmy Cagney would have. Why, you dirty rat? It's a, it's a lot, of, lot of air going over the vocal cords. Uh, Donald Trump has a very similar voice. You know, it's wonderful that we're here in New York, Stone. I want to show you some real estate while we're up here. Own it, own it, own it, own it, own it, own it, and own it. And that one I sold to a Japanese conglomerate, and they took a bath on it. That was a very good deal. John Wayne is down here in the chest. It's very low in the instrument. Jack Benny is a similar tone, but it's up in the back of the throat where he's swallowing it and going, now wait a minute. You take the same quality and you push it up into the nasopharynx and you've got Mr. Nicholson. And I don't know why everybody can't do it, but I'm glad they can. <laughs> in fact, you are the man of a thousand voices. I am. Phil. Yeah, sure, pick a number between I can one name and the... a thousand, yes. I can pick the number, you do the voice. Mm -hmm. 537. Edgar Buchanan. Remember him from Pettigoat Junction? Come on, come on down. We got some beautiful girls down here, Stone. 126. That's Kirk Douglas. How, how deep are we now, Stone? I'll tell you, we're 20,000 leagues under the sea. <laughs> For 10 years, this man of 1,000 voices could count his acting jobs on one hand. By day, he worked as a graphic artist, designing album covers for groups like Poco and America. At night, he honed his comedy skills at the Groundlings Theater in Hollywood. This improvisational acting group included Paul Rubens, also known as Pee Wee Herman. Hartman played the gruff Captain Carl in Pee Wee's Playhouse. In 1984, he co-wrote the box office winner, Pee Wee's Big Adventure, and seriously considered leaving acting to pursue a screenwriting career. I decided I'd quit, and so I would go to auditions not caring if I got the parts and started getting everything I went up for because I think people can sense the desperation in a performer. And then this audition for Saturday Night Live. And I remember one thing I did that I think was a key moment was I said, uh, I can do any dialect, uh, call out a dialect. And, and uh, Dennis Miller said, do French. And I went, oh, I don't do French. <laughs> You've kind of been the utility man 
all these years. I mean, you're yeah, they call me the glue, and that's different than being the front man. Um, I'm often the guy who doesn't get the laughs, but sustains the believability of whatever sketch is going on by giving a realistic performance. As you have watched other younger members of the Saturday Night Live cast move on and make it big in Hollywood, has it, has it hurt? To be honest, yeah, it has. I felt some envy, and from the start, really, I've been overshadowed by, by others on the show, and so it's something that I had to get used to. I mean, you don't, you don't work on the same show with Dana Carvey and not take a sort of a back seat much of the time. I was also his biggest fan. Uh, yeah, it, it hurts, but you get over it, you know? <laughs> it's not my job to be his friend. It's not my job to be invited to the White House and be patted on the back. My job is to entertain people, to give them some diversion from the banality of the political scene and the humdrum nature of life in the 90s. And while he may not worry about stepping on the commander-in-chief's toes, the chairman of the board is another story. No, I'm more worried about making fun of Frank Sinatra, frankly. That is a dangerous thing. You describe yourself during this past season as the grand old man <laughs> of Saturday Night Live. At age what, 40? I'm 45. 45, the grand old man. Well, it's true, you know, there are people half my age coming into the cast. Have you outgrown the show, do you think? I wouldn't say I've outgrown the show. I've just reached a point where I, I'm ready to challenge myself again. And it, and it creates anxiety in me because I'm walking away from a sure thing, I think. I'm gonna miss this town. It's been very, very good to me, Stone. Like his best friend Dana Carvey, Hartman now faces life after Saturday Night Live, a move he says is driven not only by career considerations, but by lifestyle. Really gonna miss her. But I've got one in California that's 32 feet longer. <laughs> if the show was done in California, I don't think Dana and I would leave. New York, for all its, you know, culture, is really kind of boring. No riots, no uh, earthquakes, the hillsides don't burst into flame every couple of years. Los Angeles is an exciting place to live. Well, you won't be seeing the laid-back West Coast Phil Hartman on Saturday Night Live next season. You'll still hear him on The Simpsons, where he voices a number of characters. I'm Troy McClure. You might remember me from such films as Cry Yuma and Here Comes the Coast Guard. But tonight I'm here to tell you about a new toothpaste that not only cleans and brightens, but also straightens your teeth. But his really big pitch <laughs> is for a new and improved Hartman on The Phil Show, his attempt to bring a variety program back to network well, television. He assured us he'll deliver big-name celebrities talking candidly about the major issues of the day, like Bill Clinton on the sexual harassment lawsuit. I don't see why everybody's making such a big deal about this. Uh, what's wrong with being sexy? This is exciting. You got a guy in office who's a hunk, who women are crazy for. I am the number one most fantasized man in America next to you, Stone and Frank Sinatra on his recent lapses on stage. What difference does it make? You know, nobody goes through as much as I gone through without crashing the hard disk a couple of times, baby. And let me tell you something. It all stems back to from here to eternity when I was doing that scene with Ernie Let's Do Our Own Stunts Borg 9, and I took a couple of big shots to the cranium in there. Look it. I can always do another take. This summer, shooting begins on Hartman's first starring role in a feature film called House Guest. But unlike so many other former Saturday Night Live cast members, his real ambition lies on the small screen, hoping his new Phil show will be a hit. As for Bill Clinton's thoughts on Hartman's departure from Saturday Night Live, the president's press secretary told me today he's a big fan and left it at that.